In this video, I'm going to be going over Search GPT, which is a new prototype that OpenAI just announced, which is a temporary prototype for the new AI search feature that gives you fast and timely answers with clear and relevant sources. Let's just go through the video here. So you're going to be able to put in your query. And then once you submit the query, the response that you get back looks very similar to something like a response that you get back from Perplexity. It is very much in line with the branding of OpenAI like you'd expect. And it does look like they even have some generative UI components, like when you ask questions about the weather there. It's going to be interesting to see some of the other generative UI components that they add as well, which they also touch on at the end of the blog post. Let's just go to the next video here. Another thing that I noticed within this is it does have that autocomplete, which is something that ChatGPT doesn't have. And then for the sources themselves, they're not just going to reference a number and then show you the websites at the bottom. You're going to be able to have that reference just like that in line. And then if you see here, if I just pause this here, you will also have a tool tip where you'll be able to see clearly where that information is coming from. You'll also have this panel here of all of those links as well. So it's very prominent where all of the different sources are coming from. And I think this is something that's definitely going to appease a bunch of different publishers, which is a big piece that they mentioned within the blog post, where they are going to be working with a number of different publishers to integrate their news and articles directly within this and give them a bit of control on how their answers are displayed. Obviously, you're going to be able to ask follow up questions just like you'd expect, just like you'd use like a perplexity there's really just references galore here. So there's the references at the end of the sentences. There's also those references in line on those little cards at the bottom there. And then there's going to be those references in the panel on the left-hand side here. So it looks like they're really taking the aim where they're trying to make it as prominent as possible exactly and very clearly where all the information is coming from. They mentioned with this product that they are going to be partnering with publishers and creators. This is something that I think Perplexity got a little bit of flack over the past couple months recently, where there was a bit of a controversy with some Forbes journalists, where they were a little bit unhappy with how Perplexity was displaying the results. There's an interesting debate going on with scraping and crawling and all of these things. If you have any strong opinions, put them in the comments below. I'm definitely curious to hear some more opinions on this sort of thing. They have some quotes from some of the executives of the publishers that they partnered with, which I think do actually sum up what they're aiming to do quite well. So we'll just read this one to start. So AI search is going to become one of the key ways that people navigate the internet. And it's crucial in these early days that the technology is built in a way that values, respects, and protects journalism and publishers. We look forward to partnering with OpenAI in the process and creating a new way for readers to discover the Atlantic. Do you see they're coming out of the gate with this? where they really are definitely making an effort to partner with publishers. We've seen a number of deals that they've struck over the past several months that likely will be integrated into something like this. Another thing that stood out to me is that they mentioned that they're launching a way for publishers to manage how they appear in Search GPT. They don't really go into detail what that exactly means, but it's interesting to know it does seem to be pretty prudent to give publishers a little bit more control on how their results are displayed within the Search GPT interface. Now, the other thing to know with this is they lay out clearly that Search GPT is about search and is separate from training OpenAI's generative AI foundation models. What's interesting with this is that sites can be surfaced in search results even if they opt out of generative AI training. There is a way that you can include on your website that you don't want your website to be included within the corpus that they're using for the training data in the OpenAI GPT series of models. It looks like there is a bit of a distinction here. Next, I think this quote from another one of the partners is pretty interesting as well. Sam and the truly talented team at OpenAI innately understand that for AI-powered search to be effective, it must be founded on the highest quality, most reliable information furnished by trusted sources. For the heavens to be in equilibrium, the relationship between technology and content must be symbiotic and provenance must be protected. So it looks like they're really trying to partner and appears publishers. It almost reminds me a little bit of when Apple News came out and how they positioned that with publishers, where there was a little bit of a revenue sharing agreement. I have no idea what it looks like on the back end, but definitely in terms of the positioning of this new search GPT, it reminds me akin to something like that. Next, there are a couple little tidbits here that they mentioned. They're going to be working on areas like local information as well as commerce 
and then they're going to be incorporating feedback into the prototype that they get from users and publishers. Will you be using something like this? Let me know what your thoughts are on this within the comments below. Otherwise, until the next one.